Earthbed. Good day, learners! This is Earth Pen. For our discussion continuation about the series of cracks on the Earth's surface, after learning the different types of faults, we will distinguish today if these faults are active or inactive faults. But before we begin the discussion, if you would like to encourage us to produce more educational content, please show your support by giving a like to the video and subscribing to our channel. You can also help our team grow with your monetary support through our donation PayPal link located in the description below. Did you know that the history showed that 90% of the world's largest earthquakes happen in the Pacific Ring of Fire? Yes, you heard it right. This is the world's greatest earthquake zone found along the rim of the Pacific Ocean's continental plate. This zone extends from Chile to South America's coast, then through Central America to Mexico, plus the west coast of U.S., then the southern Alaska, and then through Japan, Philippines, New Guinea, and New Zealand. These earthquakes occur in the Pacific Ring of Fire because of the active movement of faults around it. The plates in this region are constantly moving by the compressing, expanding, and sliding forces, which resulted to creation of numerous land formations like trenches, volcanoes, and mountains. This region has the 75% of world's volcanoes which is more than 450 volcanoes. These are just the products of active faults in bigger picture. Yet, how are we going to identify whether a fault is an active fault or an inactive fault? Simply, active faults are faults that recently created movements of the Earth's crust over the historical period of 10,000 years. It is a fault classified an active fault. It means that it could still potentially create minor or major earthquakes over the period of time. While the inactive faults are faults that historically did not show signs of Earth's cross movement underneath over the time period of 10,000 years. Yet, being classified as an inactive fault doesn't guarantee that it could never be awakened and be active again. Because there are a lot of cases that a fault may appear as an inactive fault but then generated earthquakes after how many years of being dormant. It may have not moved for a hundred years or it really had movements underground yet it wasn't recorded or noticeable. Geologists usually reads the movements of the fault using the surface marks that the movement left behind. But due to rapid environmental change such as erosion or urban developments, these surface marks may become hard to notice or find. Geologists easily read fault profiles with creep movement or the very slow type of fault movement. Creep movement of a fault may be continuous or sporadic that may or may not be related to any recorded earthquake activity. Yet, creep movements of a fault always have very obvious surface marks such as ground subsidence and deformed structures. One example of this is the famous fault, the San Andreas Fault, that has the average movement rate of 56 mm per year or 2 inch in a year. It is actually comparable to the annual growth of our fingernails. With this consistent rate, scientists 
approximated that by 15 million years to Los Angeles will be then adjacent to San Francisco. And that is all for now. I hope you learned something from us today. Once again, this is Earth Pen. Learning has never been this easy for anyone anywhere.